but you know, it's Nate's favorite day of the week. Press conference. My 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 second favorite day of the week. Second favorite? Yeah. Yeah. First favorite's any 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 day besides this. <laughs> oh, not early game day. Uh, no, 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 not any day besides this. Oh yeah, you guys are tough. All right, let's do this. What do you see from Purdue? Obviously, they're a great team. Um, you know, I think I think what's impressive about them is they have the most dominant player in college basketball. I mean, it's been well documented and proven time and time again. Uh, they got a great coach, and you know, I, I think if you take you know Edie out of the mix, I mean, I, I still think it's a top twenty type team. You know, so I think that really says something about how they built that that team and that program. So. Uh, we know we've got an incredible challenge on our hands and you know it, it's, it's obviously you know you're asking yourself lots of questions in preparation and you know um you know i i, I can't wait to see how it plays out you know i can't wait i mean it's going to be a fun environment and um you know it can be incredibly challenging and it's exactly what we need what most stands out to you about Zach? i mean just he's he's you know he's 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 big he's got great hands they've taught him great ceiling techniques he's he's sturdy so, you know, it's hard to knock him, you know, off his line or off balance. And, um, you know, he, he's he's done an incredible job, you know, you know, being able to play through fouls and, and draw fouls, you know. So uh, it's, it's just it's just a rare combination. And and they've done a great job developing him. And, and I saw him when he was a younger player. And uh, to see the player he's become is it's inspiring. What are some of the things you tell Umar about defending? Well, we'll leave those to Saturday. You know, um, nothing you need to know. What do you think about just fouls in general as far as Umar got five, Krivis is five, Zach Eady gets everybody fouled? Well, well you, know, you, know, you know how many is out? Zach Eady has five, too. Yeah. But like you said, he doesn't pick him up a lot. A lot. He gets well, a lot. Maybe he hasn't played against Arizona. So we'll see how that plays out. Well, does a guy like him have an advantage? And is he particularly clever the way he can pick him up? Or do you think? Maybe well, he's he's big, he's strong, he's got great hands, and you know I, I just think that you know he, you you've never played against somebody that big, so I, I just think the angles, um, you know the just the, the the things that maybe the the habits you've developed, you know over your course of playing basketball your entire life, get skewed a little bit because you know maybe as he's picking the ball up, it's a little further from his body, it's a little higher than you're used to, just just things like that, and uh, you know and. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to tell a guy to prepare for that. We just got to get out there and get a feel for it. Have you gone into games before and said, look, this guy is so good, he's going to get his. The other guys are, you know, we'll be up for it, not more. I mean, I think, I think every game you go into, you have multiple plans. You know, I mean, that, um, you know, I, I think you really limit your team if you say there's only one way to win this game. And, and so, you know, that, that's why games are fun to play. And basketball is so interesting because the flow of the game – Offense to defense, defense to offense. It's, it's a constant transition, and um, you know that there, you know, there's, there's there's periodic breaks, but then there's a lot of flow. So I think it makes it really interesting. And, and if you're just going to hang your hat on one thing, I think it's it's, it's pretty tough to beat anybody. So Matt dug up the stat earlier this week that for regular season top three matchup for Arizona since '97, coming together, going into a sold out NBA arena. What does that do for the experience of your guys working on the stage? Well, it's, you know, it's where we want our program to be. We, we want to play on those types of stages. And, and in order to play on those type of stages, you have to do well yourself. You know, you, you could schedule it, but, it, you know, if you, if, you know, that you schedule out in advance. So in between when you schedule it and actually when the game's played, if you struggle, the, the game's not going to be as meaningful. So we want to play in meaningful games. And, and part of us playing in meaningful games is – um, being successful in the games prior to that. So I, I feel like we've done that. I feel like this is a challenge, a great challenge. I feel like we're up for it. You know, I mean, that doesn't mean by any stretch that we're going to win. I mean, we could get blown out, but that's how games go. But, you know, like I've told you guys before, I don't I don't think, you know, a win or a loss at Purdue on December 16th is going to ultimately determine how our season plays out. We just have a long line of impressive games, obviously. But uh, you mentioned some things earlier, how good their guard play is. That feels like it's been sort of an evolution from my vantage point of Matt Painter's program, getting really consistent guard play. What do you see from the back? Well, Matt Painter's been a really good coach for a long time. So, I mean, he's, I'm sure if we 
dissected it. He's won lots of different ways, had success with lots of different types of players. Um, you know, recently he's fallen into a stretch of really big guys. And, you know, I love big guys. You know, he might love them as much or more than I do. And, um, and, and so, you know, and he's, you know, and, he, and he's filled it in with, you know, good players around. You know, I, I think, you know, he, you know, you know, the two guards he has, you know, Smith and Lawyer are really good players. And, you know, and, and maybe they've outperformed what others thought, you know, they could be. But I don't think they've outperformed what Matt thought they could be. And and he knew what he had. And, and you know, he's put really, really good, solid players around a dominant player, which is it's, it's a pretty good formula for success. Obviously, Zach, you, in terms of the team, is the main focus. But what have you seen from the guys behind them and what they've been able to get well, to do? They're really good players. I mean, um, you know, uh, the, the, the Kaufman kid and, uh, and first – are really good kids and players, and they have a guy, you know, he started a lot for him last year. He's not. He's a, a really good three-point shooter at the four. So they're really good players. I mean, those guys are, you know, probably close to all conference-level players. They just happen to be, you know, playing behind the national player of the year. And 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 trust me, he puts them in games. When he has them in games in those stretches, he takes advantage of them. It's not like those guys take a second fiddle. So um, it's just really good players. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're a great program who's got – depth and, and multiple weapons and um and, and it's it's been an impressive run they've been on and it's been fun to watch them in preparation and i can't wait to get out there on the court and compete against them um, caleb love is one of your best free throw shooters he's been in the line about four times a game how much more would you like to see from him i mean i i don't i mean i don't set hard numbers you know i just want guys to be aggressive and, and make the right basketball decision and i think he's done a really good job of that and and you know he's he's He's, you know, showing a you know, propensity to put the ball on the floor, get in the paint, you know, not afraid of contact. And if you do that, usually, you know, you get rewarded with some free throws. So, um, you know, I, I like how he's playing and, you know, I really don't see any need for him to, you know, tilt his focus any other direction than what he's already doing. You're undefeated, uh, you're number one. Is there one maybe core thing you'd like to see this team as they do get better? I mean, I want to get better every day. I mean, I, I, I didn't wake up this morning thinking we're number one, we're good enough, season's in the bag. I mean, I woke up this morning or you know, didn't sleep well last night figuring out how could we get better to play against Purdue. So, I mean, the rankings and, and all that field stuff's for you guys. It's not, not inside my locker room. So, um, you know, I, I don't there, – there's – I want to get better at a lot of things. You know, not, not, not one certain thing in particular. We want to get better at a lot of things because I know the challenges we have ahead, not only with Purdue, Alabama, FAU, then a Pac-12 schedule. So um, we, we got a long ways to go. There were, uh, there were some outside guys you guys have been using the struggling in terms of their majors when it normally struggles a little bit. People viewed it through this before. What is it about this time of year? Well, you, there's a lot of factors that go into this time of year. Um, you know, you probably played eight, nine, or ten games. Um, you know, maybe, maybe – Certain teams that thought they were going to do well have struggled and have kind of, you know, been able to, to reinvent themselves a little bit or have a little fire lit underneath them. Maybe some teams have, you know, you know, haven't or, or did better than they thought, let their guard down a little bit. I mean, the guys are in finals, you know. I mean, you've been coaching them for a couple months pretty hard. Maybe, you know, they, they, they don't listen quite as well or maybe you lose your edge coaching, I mean, a little bit. There, there's a lot of things that go into it this time of year. And, and, and the one – you know, tough thing, I think, on the outside looking in that people don't understand is, you know, college basketball at this level is pretty much a daily thing. I mean, you have a, a few built-in days off, but, you know, I mean, those days off are strategic days for rest and, um, and, and, and rehab and things like that. But um, this, this the everyday nature of it, and, and, you know, you're dealing with human beings, there's going to be ups and downs. Talking about that a little bit, um, you know, from the national point of view, there will be people that Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. I mean, it's, uh, you know, but but that being said, I mean, I, I own everything that our, our program's done, you know, positively and negatively. And um, and, you know, I, I know that experience has made me a better coach and hopefully it's made us a better team and better program. So by no means do I do I shy away from it. And, and, and I, I assume, you know, Matt and Purdue have had the same exact approach as that. And, um, you know, you, you if you're coaching out of fear, a failure for something that happened last year, man, I mean, it, it, that's pretty tormenting, you know, on yourself. So um, I'm, I'm an optimistic guy. I think that's the only way to, 
to, to get through tough times is to be optimistic. And, you know, and when you're optimistic and no good days are coming ahead, I think it also allows you to, to, to stare down your struggles a little bit more, stay in your struggles a little bit more and come out of them better. And, and that, that's what we've decided to do as a program. What would you scout? Is that one of the games you look at from last year? Or yeah, I'm, I'm focused on this year's team. I mean, this year's team, we have enough tape now that, that I don't think we need to look past. What do you make of all the great big guys who come back, like Petey, Oscar Shibway, Jimmy McKinley? Is that NIL? Is that what the NBA is? What well, I mean, it's, it's probably a combination of both. Um, you know, I mean, just the NBA game has changed a little bit, and, and things they value seem to have changed a little bit. And, and so maybe there's not as many opportunities at that next level for those you know, bigger, bigger guys. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're sticking around college. I think it makes our game better. Um, and, and, I, and I'm happy for those players because, uh, you know, they're, they're uniquely talented guys who get to showcase their talent for a little bit longer on, a, you know, hopefully a national stage. Did you see us at 7 3, 7 4 in the NBA, at, you know, the way the game is played now? Or? Well, th th that'll be for the NBA to decide, but. I, if I was at that level, I, I'd sure like him on my team. Thanks, Thank you, guys.